I'm not going to ask you to name a, a top five villains, but you know, five people that stick out in your head you know, immediately right now who, who've done the most to damage our sport in the last 13 years since Lance first won his tour. Well, one of the things that people will say about Lance is, come on, I mean, don't tell me that he was any worse than, than Jan Ulrich or even Basso or Contador even who tested positive. Um, you know, basically all those top guys were doing something, so therefore they're all equal in terms of villainy. But I don't agree with that. Um, I think Lance was a particular case. I think he saw doping as an opportunity. He embraced that opportunity and he decided if, if our doping program was better than everybody else's, we would have such an advantage because doping is such a big influence on competition. So I think Lance seized the opportunity of doping to make himself the most successful um, cyclist in the history of the Tour de France. Fraudulent, of course, and that would be taken away. But at the time that he left in 2005, he's a seven-time Tour winner. As we've said earlier, if he didn't come back, he's still the seven-time Tour winner. So I think Lance would have to be the number one villain in my eyes. And I don't want to categorise him that, but I don't think there was anybody more cynical. I think what Lance did to M. O'Reilly was despicable beyond belief. And, uh, and everything he's got in terms of the consequences of his doping being discovered, he deserves. People say, oh, I feel sorry for him for this reason. I feel sorry for, the, for them for that reason. I say, if you feel sorry for, for him, you weren't listening when he discussed M. O'Reilly at the Discovery press, press Conference in 2004. You weren't listening when he discussed M. O'Reilly in November 2005 at the SCA case under oath. So everything bad that's happened to him since, in my view, he deserves. I, I always had a particular disliking, I have to say, for Johan Bernil. I just thought, if you could put cynicism into human form, you've got Johan Bernil. I think he had an attitude to doping that was wretched. I mean, again, that old cycling thing of doping is our business. It's not your business. Don't even dare ask. We do whatever we like, and you have no right to know. Cycling was never going to you know, recover as long as people like Johan Bernil were involved. Um, so I, I, I look forward to him not being involved in world cycling. A guy who's come out of this relatively unscathed has been Jim Okovitz. I think Jim Okovitz knew precisely what was going along. I think he was a plausible guy. I think people believed him. And I think he's another guy who, on the, on the barometer of cynicism, would be up there an 8 or a 9 out of 10. For more videos like this, go to youtube.com forward slash GCN.